What's going on, everybody? Crazy Dog back with my second to last individual Browns free agency target video of the week. Now, I say individual because I have one more individual Browns free agency target video coming out tomorrow. And then on Sunday, I wrap up the series with five more Browns free agency targets before legal tampering officially opens up on Monday. Now, for those who are new to the game or whatever, and you don't know what the hell legal tampering is, let me explain it to you in the simplest way possible. All right? You can tamper legally. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. But uh, essentially, it's when players, agents, and teams can begin negotiating contract terms. And you can come to an agreement, but this is important. It's not official until Wednesday, March 16th. When the new league year starts, that's when any signings made on Monday and Tuesday and all trades made prior to Wednesday become official. From that point on, it's official, man. You know, Khalil Mack would officially be a Charger. Russell Wilson's going to officially be a member of the Broncos. Carson Wentz is officially a commander. And then, you know, any free agency signings obviously made after that are obviously official. But yeah, and then of course, that's when we're going to start seeing the iconic pictures of players in their new team's facilities, pen in hand, sitting at the table, signing their new contract, or in the case of trades, maybe, you know, taking a tour of the facility and everything, you know, meeting the coaches and talking to the media. This is honestly one of my favorite times of the year when it comes to the NFL offseason. Right up there with the NFL draft and, of course, camp season. Because when it's camp season, then the season's essentially here. You know? Can't wait, man. Just a few more days. And then chaos ensues. <laughs> you know? I love it. I love chaos. In case you didn't know. <laughs> but anyways, um, in case you haven't watched... My three previous videos, I highly suggest you do so. But in those videos, I talked about wide receiver Allen Robinson, defensive end Chandler Jones, and yesterday, of course, I talked about defensive lineman B.J. Hill. Three guys who I could honestly see the Browns going after. Now, as for today's Browns free agency target, I'd probably give the Browns a decent chance to maybe land this guy, depending on uh, how busy his market is. You know, how uh, high his price goes. I don't think he'd be asking for too much. But I don't know how high the Browns are willing to go. I could see this guy as a legit Browns target because we all know Andrew Berry's not going to leave any stone unturned. He's going to do anything possible to make this receiving core better. Now, I think we all know who our option A is, and that is Amari Cooper. <laughs> a for Amari. Now, option B is probably going to be like Allen Robinson or maybe this guy. You know, option C is probably going to be like maybe Christian Kirk. You know, those kind of guys. You know, Russell Gage. I've heard his name from Browns fans a couple times. You know, like the smaller names. But, uh, yeah, when it comes to this guy, he's really good. Like, he's a beast. And, of course, he's an LSU Tiger. You know how the Browns are with LSU Tigers now. You know, the John Dorsey regime loved Miami Hurricanes. Well, this regime loves LSU Tigers. I mean, we had, what, five on the team last year? And we might be losing two of them? <laughs> both on offense? <laughs> and, of course, they're both best friends? <laughs> so, you know, we got to replace our uh, LSU Tigers with more LSU Tigers. So, um, today's Browns free agency target is, of course, a wide receiver. And it's none other than... Former Jacksonville Jaguars wide receiver, DJ Chark. DJ Chark, DJ Chark, DJ Chark, DJ Chark. Would you guys like that if I did that, if we signed him and I sang that every time he scored? <laughs> Imagine. Oh, that would be funny. Oh, man, that would be so cringe. But, hey, it is what it is. But like I said, I don't know if we're going to go after DJ Chark. It depends on his price and stuff and how busy his market is. Now, in terms of would he fit the timeline of the core, he is 25 years old. He'll be turning 26 in September. So he's just entering the beginning stages of his prime years. 
and essentially he would fit in the timeline. He's not too old. He's not over 30. We all know how Browns feel about players over 30. They don't like to go after those kind of guys. They like to go after guys who are just entering their prime years so they can get the best out of them. Now, again, DJ Chark's 25. He'll be turning 26 in September. He went to college at LSU. Duh. And uh, he was drafted by the Jaguars in the second round. 61st overall, so eight picks ahead of B.J. Hill in the 2018 NFL Draft. Okay. And you look at his stats. Again, he's played four seasons. His best year was 2019. He played in 15 games, started 14, had 118 targets, 73 receptions, 1,008 receiving yards. Eight touchdowns. His longest reception was 69 yards. Ha! Nice. And, uh, yeah. He's uh, really good now for his career. 43 games, 30 starts. Of course, he only played in and started four games this past year due to injury. That really sucked. 15 total touchdowns. Yeah. This is a guy that uh, I wouldn't mind bringing in. To solidify our receiving core. Honestly, if we wound up with like a DJ Chark and say, I don't know, Garrett Wilson or Drake London or Traylon Burks, that'd be great. That would be wonderful. I'd be over the moon. If we got Amari Cooper and Garrett Wilson, Burks or London, oh my god, that would be amazing. <laughs> now you may be wondering, crazy dog, if Amari Cooper's the Browns' first option, as you say, why haven't you done the video on him yet? Well, dummy, uh, <laughs> he hasn't been released yet. And I'm not going to do a video on a guy who's not a free agent. Now, he could be released soon, but I think the Cowboys are going to do everything possible to try and trade him so they can control where he goes. Because, obviously, if they release him, he becomes a free agent and he can go anywhere. He could go to Washington to play with Carson Wentz. I mean, remember, what was it, two year, year or two ago, Washington really, really tried to get him. They were like this close to getting him, but then the Cowboys uh, brought him back. Remember that? So, yeah, we'll see what happens with DJ Chark. He would be a good, like, plan C behind Cooper and Robinson. Now, plan B would have been Chris Godwin, but of course he got franchise tagged and Mike Williams got extended, so obviously they're off the board. But uh, yeah, like if we don't get DJ Chark, I mean, I could see, like, again, yeah, Christian Kirk, I could see freaking Russell Gage. I mean, there's probably a few other names out there that I'm not mentioning. Knowing Andrew Barry, he's going to go out there and get someone that we're not expecting. I could see DJ Chark being that kind of guy. But yeah, you see his stats. Uh, it'd be nice if we can get him to duplicate that 2019 season. Of course, coming off an injury, that'd be tough. But if we can get him to have another like 2019-esque year where he just goes off. I mean, if he's a number one, of course, he's going to get catches and score touchdowns and stuff. But yeah, just imagine real quick, like a DJ Chark, DPJ, Anthony Schwartz, receiver trio. With Demetri Felton occasionally going out to the receiving core every once in a while. And then, of course, you have Hooper, you have Njoku, you have Bryant at tight end. Chubb and Hunt and maybe Johnson at running back with Felton occasionally there as well. Yeah, um, honestly, it wouldn't even surprise me if the Browns, like, doubled down in free agency and got a DJ Chark and Russell Gage or Amari Cooper and, like, Christian Kirk or something. Or, oh, another name. Andy Isabella. Via trade. I mentioned him, I think, a while back, I'm pretty sure, in another video. But, yeah, Andy Isabella could possibly get traded, too. But he's essentially another Anthony Schwartz. So, I don't know if we're going to do that. But, yeah, I would love a DJ Chark. The question is, though, would Andrew Barry realistically go after him? Like I said, it's probably... Uh, depending on the price and how busy his market is. But yeah, that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this video. Uh, of course, I'll be back tomorrow for my final individual Browns free agency target video. 
And then, of course, on Sunday, I'll have my five more free agent targets for the Cleveland Browns. And then chaos in the series on Monday. Now, I hope you guys tune in tonight because Cavs play the Heat. Big game coming up. And uh, hopefully we can get that dub. So, with that being said, I'm Crazy Dog. Let's go Browns. And I'm out. Hope to see you guys tonight.